Okay, today I'm gonna to help those of you who have had back pain, still got back pain, but in certain directions. Meaning, if you've had a back pain or acute back pain episode, spasm, disc problems, that sort of stuff, and you've worked on your extension, and you've got your extension better, you've worked on all that stuff, maybe you've done some McKenzie stuff, but your flexion is still not quite right. So you've got this part right, but you haven't got that part right, or you feel very tight going to flexion. Maybe you've had back pain, you don't really have back pain anymore, but you're stiff. And when you go forward, you feel very tight here, or you really struggle with trying to get into a rounded position, like you feel like you're guarded. Some people sort of, they spend so much time in neutral to stay out of pain, because they don't want to go forward, they sort of get used to being staying in neutral. So every time they bend, they keep their back straight all the time, and they, you're not letting it round, okay? It's important to go into rounding your back. I mean, initially, when you've got acute back pain, you keep it sort of neutral, and you try and avoid that, you try and get your extension better, and then we go into flexion. So this part is to help you with that flexion and get you confident with bending forward again to get you out of that neutral spine. So this is for when you're unloaded. I want to pick up something, I should be able to round my back. A lot of people don't, they guard it. So I'm going to go and order four mobility things that you can try once you've done one, then you move to the next one over a period of weeks to try and get further and further into flexion. All right, so these ones are good mobility-wise. I'm also going to do a video called part two, which do the muscle and the strength thing, stability side of things. So look out for that video. This one's just mobility. Look out for the one following, which is all the stability and the strengthening stuff. So first thing I want you to work on, if you are struggling with flexion, start off with rotation. That is the key. So you're going to go from this position and you're going to rotate. So what you do, instead of just rotating your legs over, what I would do is shuffle your feet over like this. So when you rotate, you go into a little bit of flexion. Okay, when you rotate like this, you're sort of staying in neutral extension. Okay, if you rotate your feet over to here, and then move both legs slowly over like this. So both go over, you've got to keep this arm down, this arm down, let that go over. What it will do is it'll pull your spine into a little bit of flexion as you rotate. So this is you getting used to, can I open up and flex my spine? And this is the best way to start because it's unloaded. Okay, you're not loaded onto the discs or facet joints thing. You're opening up and you'll feel that stretch sort of going through here in this deep lumbar spine. And this, your extensors and your QL here, are probably the ones that are the tightest, that are sort of guarded, shortened up and stiff, that are stopping you go forward, okay? So you go and open and stretch them out, and you just stay there for about a minute or two, okay? And then slowly roll back. When you go to the other side, creep your legs around, over you go, and stretch the other way, trying to keep your knees together, and open up this side. You probably find that, obviously, one side's gonna be tighter than the other. The tight that's got the the, the painful side, probably going to be the tighter side, is the tight side you're opening up. So if my left side was sore, my legs going to the right would be the tighter side. So if you imagine these here, these extensor muscles here, and your QLs, okay, there, they're the ones that you've been held in tension to stop yourself going forward because you're worried about the pain. Okay, so working on extension won't loosen them up. It sorts out other things like disc pressures and that sort of stuff and gets your range better so you can walk. But if you've been held for a period of time, we're talking it might be weeks and months, of you been not being able to go forward, they've actually gone from, they're guarded and your brain is holding them, but they're also, they've been shortened and they're stiff. So you've got to stretch them out, all right? So that'll be your first one to do because it works on physically opening up the joint, physically opening up and stretching the tissues and getting you confident with a little bit of flexion, okay? The second thing you wanna work on is repeated flexions. So what you can do then is do it in standing, but you take the tension off. But you don't just start going and trying to do this sort of thing, okay? What I want you doing is doing it one leg at a time, and I'll show you how to do that, and that gives you confidence in bending forward. So you're going through a flexion movement. That was sort of stretching out the tissues. This also stretches out the tissues, but this is more about confidence and getting the brain letting go because some of this movement here is because your brain's guarding it okay you feel stiff but your brain is going don't move so we've got to get you confident in doing that so it's a bit of a double whammy this one it stretches you out but also helps this so what do you do use a bench maybe it could be your sofa it could be your bed 
All right, could be bench in the gym. Stand about a meter away from it. One leg up onto that. Now what this does is it takes out the neural tension on one side. So basically doing this, I've got neural tension down both legs. Okay, so I'm gonna be pretty, I'm gonna get to the point where I like, oh, I feel it in my legs, I can't go any further. If you take one leg out of the equation, all right, when you go forward, you'll probably find that you can go a lot further in your back because you haven't got the leg neural tension holding you back, if you like, so I can go further, all right? So this leg, you'll probably find is the side of the pain. So if I'm right side of pain, right leg up. Two hands on your knee. What you gotta try and do is just trace down your shin with your hands. If you notice, if I, okay, I'm gonna slide my hands to my foot, look what's happening in my back. I'm pulling myself into flexion without knowing it. So I'm doing a task of reaching forward, and what I'm naturally doing is I have to bend at my back to do it, okay? But I've got half the neural tension that I would have if I did this, all right? That's the key for you. So put it up there, you'll find you get way more flexion in your spine than you would normally, all right? Now, what you wanna do is go forward to the point you stop at a bit of a hamstring stretch, okay? I don't want any neural tension here, just a hamstring stretch is fine. Or you stop at where that back, you feel that if that back's grabbing you or tight, don't push through that, all right? So you come to here and you go, oh, back's tight, back off. Now this is a repeated flexion. So you don't sustain that like you would with a rotation. You go forward slowly, where's the pain? Back off. And I would do 10 reps of that in one set. Swap legs, 10 reps of that. The speed is quite slow. Remember, don't have the legs straight. That's neural tension. Bend it, take it off. Reaching forward, nice and slow. This is about the right tempo. Stretch back, pause, go again. 10 of those, okay? You might end up doing two or three sets of that, okay? And this stuff you can do every day, all right? That would be your second thing you'd do to progress after the one on the floor is working well. If you feel looser there, progress to this. If this is better, you're going, hey, that's really helped me go forward, but I'm still stuck at the bottom, all right? Then you go to repeated flexions with two legs on a bench. Now, what I tend to do, you can do this on the floor. So you can do it like this, where you go on the floor, if I show you on an angle like this. You can do this, one leg up, other leg up. And what you do is you bring your knees in, and watch my spine. I bring it into flexion, back to neutral. Okay, hold onto my knees. So I don't have to use my hip flexors on my core to hold my, it's not a core exercise, because I'm holding onto my knees, it's a lot easier. And this is not a, don't get me wrong, this is not an ab crunch exercise. So keep this down, bend this part, okay? I don't want you doing a ab crunch, all right? It is not an ab crunch. Your abdominals are relaxed with this. It is a lumbar spine flexion mobility. So use your hands. If you find you haven't got enough strength to do that or that's really not working for you, you can't get your back off the ground or maybe it's so tight, you need a bit of gravity assistance. So you can swap that to do this. If you've got a bench, pull this up to there. What this is gonna do is give you a decline to give you a bit of gravity assist. It's just a little bit difficult getting on, so be careful with this one. Start at the top, come into here, hold yourself down, make sure your head's still on this part. And now, what I do, it's very easy because what's happening is gravity is letting my legs roll that way, okay? So now what I can do is come into here and just gently pull. And you can see how much room I can get here. I can get my pelvis right off the bed here and I go into flexion, okay? Back to neutral. Gravity assist, so easy. There's no pressure here. It's all relaxed, okay? Discs love this, okay? Once they've healed up, if you've got a disc bulge, you know, remember this is down the track. Yeah, you, know, you wouldn't do this as an acute disc bulge exercise. This is way down the track when you've got all your extension back and no pain, but you can't go forward because you haven't been bending forward. This is to help you bend forward, open up the back of the disc. It doesn't bulge it, just opens up and stretches the tissues. Gives you that sort of brain confidence that I can bend my back without hurting it. And again, 10 reps at a time, three sets of that. Okay, nice slow pace of that. That's what I progress to, to get your movement and your flexion better. If that's good, okay, 
then you, and you do that and that's improved you again and you go hey i'm really bending now but i still got the loss of range right at the bottom then you go for your ql stretch one of my favorites this one really starts tackling ql and extensor flexibility and range okay so by then you should be able to get the point where i can bend forward now so what you do is you go to maximize that to get rid of all the last bit of tightness you go into your ql stretch bend the knee take the new tension off grab the inside of your foot knee inside of your arm hip well knee push that down so you open up the hip okay turn around the other side so if you think like if i'm doing my left side i've rotated left all right my right leg is out, I'm rotating left, I will feel this, this side. And then what I do with this arm, is I then side bend over, okay? So I'm side bending, I might have to work out where I'm gonna put my foot here. I keep my shoulder rotated, I side bend over, and then all this stretches out and opens up. Then you'll find you get that last bit of sort of muscular release. Like you sort of got the first bit of muscular release with the rotation. Then we went through movement stuff to get the movement better. Now we're finally chipping off the last bit of rotation. If you try and do this stretch first, you won't get anywhere. Okay, so do this one last of your four, then you'll probably find that when you go back and go, can I bend? It's all eased off, okay? Now, of course, these are mobility ones, all right? This is all well and good, okay? Stretching it out is great and you need to do this stuff. But to lock it in, you need the strength. You need to re-educate abdominals lumbar spine stabilizers so when you bend forward they are working properly that's the stuff i'll go through in part two check that out next video